October is one of Aubrey's busiest months. Worldwide is known as Dysautonomy Awareness Month. Um, it shares with breast cancer, of course. This year we wanted to really achieve a lot more. When she was first diagnosed, it was, I guess at first it was kind of confusing because we didn't really know what it was. Um, so that for a while it was just kind of research online, uh, trying to figure out what exactly it was. Aubrey's situation is not common. To get diagnosed with dysautonomia, it usually takes patients 10 to 15 years. We just extremely lucked out with the team of doctors we have. Around three and a half, she ended up getting a bad flu. That kind of kick-started something in Aubrey's body. After that, we started to notice that Aubrey would get often colds, which you think, oh, it's kind of normal for a child. She would spike really high fevers. The doctor was like, that's normal too. Some kids just, you know, have a hard time regulating temperature. And we're like, okay, that makes sense. We started it to help her with her soccer skills, her goalie, you know, soft landings kind of stuff. And then it grew from there. She just really likes it, you know, moving around and, um, you know, she likes doing the bars and stuff too, but the, the boxes were easy to just kind of set up at home. And so then we found some of the designs online and just kind of made them for her because she really likes getting around, moving around. It definitely has helped with her just general body coordination. You know, she knows, you know, when she's falling to the side, kind of how to, you know, I mean, she doesn't fall a lot doing parkour, but it just, it helps with knowing where her arms are connected to her legs, connected to her torso, everything. It just brings everything together. Um, so dysautonomia is an umbrella term for um, autonomic disorders. Aubrey has general dysautonomia. Any part of your body can stop working on you um, when there's that fight or flight kind of thing that happens in you. So any kind of stress, good or bad, it triggers your body to go, oh gosh, what do I want to do? For Aubrey, the blood just starts to pull down and go into her legs. So she starts to feel faint, of course. She starts to become panic. Her heart rate starts to increase. Her legs become too heavy um, that she can collapse and faint. I got some trophies, newspapers, medals, and some gloves. Aubrey started to play sports, um, soccer, I think at four years old. Um, and she was doing fine for the first year, but then we started to notice um, she stopped sweating. So here's my room. Aubrey was always kind of a sweaty mess after sports. Like we would like cool her down, uh, wipe her off. But then all of a sudden we started noticing she was starting to get really swollen in the cheek. Um, she was red and, and splotchy with white kind of strips around her face and wasn't sweating anymore. She started to like move her body differently, like holding it, like it was hurting. One, so this. this. I, I kind of what changed the game was she started to faint and doctors started to look like she's not just a kid that gets sick often, there's something more. This red second place award ribbon from the Yellow County Fair. And we were going into the hospital often because she would get sick with a cold, but then it would progress into something else. And I begged the doctors to look at this a little bit more and her primary care listened and she talked to a few colleagues and they came up with, it was probably dysautonomia, but she didn't get the official diagnosis until she was referred to Stanford and did more testing. And then they diagnosed her with general type dysautonomia. Playing sports has helped Aubrey immensely. It's kept her positive. It's kept her wanting to push through this. Aubrey was adamant she wasn't gonna give up. In order to play sports, she knew she has to be physically active every single day. 
which also helps her dysautonomia, though it keeps her healthy. So this is my favorite, and this is the Shooting Stars first place from the Bruins division. This is my favorite softball medal because I really like the buttons that I put on it. My favorite one of my buttons would be this one because that one was a really fun one even though we had to travel all the way to Cordova. Aubrey decided that she wanted to talk to the school about what dysautonomia is and how it affects her because she started noticing um, people were giggling at her, laughing at her. Sometimes she didn't know how to answer a question that was kind of common, like, what color is that on the wall? And Aubrey would say green when it was red. She would know the answer in her head, but it would come out wrong because uh, brain fog is common. And so she got kind of tired, like, um, I want them to know why, like why this is happening um, and there's a reason. So she decided, you know, for me, why don't I become a dysautonomia advocate and spread awareness about this because we're now hearing stories where people don't really get the diagnosis early and a lot of people don't even know what it is and I want to share that. So that's kind of how she started um, sharing at school what dysautonomia is. It, it's really just kind of helped her become a better public speaker, but then also just it's given her a way to turn this into something that she can kind of wear as a badge. You know, she gets to be an ambassador for this campaign. So this was my slideshow for um, this year on the 12th. And my very nice doctor, doctor friend, here's a picture of her. Um, she came to it and she was able to talk more about it so more people knew in my class um, and this other class. And then here's another doctor who helped and helped Dr. Friend with this. So she told Dr. Girardi about this and he um, is at Stanford and he helped me through it. And then here are my two um, um, teams, Beast Mode, um, and then here are the shooting stars, and there's my cousin Jordan, and all my friends too. This one I got from Yolo County, but um, my family members, like my aunt, and my nana, and my uncle, and my mom and dad, they came to this one, and then I also got a pen right here. And then I got this one from Davis and all my friends and family and um, my people came to this one and I was really happy about this one and this one I also got. So these were from this year. Softball teammates like Emma, Honey, Halo, and Sophia. And then like two of my soccer teammates came too and their names were and like Azul and Christina, they came and I was like, oh my gosh, how many people came for me and like all my coaches came. And I was really happy that they did that for me. Aubrey's second school presentation was she knew that most of her classmates knew what this autonomy was, but she wanted to give them a little bit more information. And so she started the idea coming up with Team Aubrey. And so we sell t-shirts and wristbands and the proceeds go to Dysautonomy International. So hopefully more research and awareness can be put into um, these efforts. All that money that we get from, from the Team Aubrey, um, hair bows and Team Aubrey t-shirts, they all go to Dysautonomy International. And that helps them raise more awareness about this chronic medical condition. 
I like how it raised awareness for the 70 million people with this, and I also like how like a bunch of people like wear this um, Tim Aubrey um, shirt and, and hair bows, and I like how like some people like ask like what is Team Aubrey, and then the people that have it tell them what it is, and that spreads more awareness. So I really like that. Aubrey's diet is a lot of salt products, pickles, <laughs> um, pretzels. Um, almonds, peanuts, but she can only eat a small amount. So um, people kind of see us like feeding her like a bird. We'll give her a couple nuts at a time and like, can she eat any more than that? I'm like, no, she can't because her stomach can only handle small meals. She has to drink water throughout the entire day more than the average person. She does have a lot of supplements and medications she takes on a daily basis. She has to take about five or six meds in the morning, one in the afternoon, and then about six or seven in the evening. Um, just to maintain her body. So Aubrey also has to take a medication for her stomach, her GI issues. Um, so she takes this, um, we started with twice daily, once in the morning now because she has her diet um, and routine's pretty um, set, so she's not as nauseous as she used to be, so she only has to take this once a day now. Um, she also takes this for GI issues um, to help um, get her gut um, where it needs to be. So she takes this once daily. Um, she takes this for um, basically some of the side effects these meds can cause her to make sure her body doesn't react negatively to it. So she takes this twice daily. Um, she takes a multivitamin, of course, to stay healthy like most children. Um, and then she takes a calcium chew um, that most adults would take, but she has to take a higher amount just to make sure she doesn't have chronic joint issues, um, which we were noticing um, with her playing sports. And then the last one is apple cider vinegar. This kind of helps with your immune system, so she takes this um, in the evening as well. Today I have a goalie camp but I usually don't have it today. We are lucky to have a goalie camp. I bring my soccer bag and my shin guards and an uh, extra goalie um, shirt and uh, two pairs of goalie gloves. On Monday and Wednesdays, Aubrey practices with uh, Davis Alliance Soccer Club. Um, it's called Shooting Stars is her team, and so she's practicing today for about 30, 40 minutes with them. And then there's a goalie clinic they're offering today through her soccer club. So she's going to then go off and um, do part of the goalie clinic. And this is the coach, Coach Ryan Mann, that has coached Aubrey since she was four years old. And she's now nine. For Aubrey, it is a little tougher. Um, the weather's fine. It's not like summer where she has the toughest time practicing, but because of the fires, um, her body is kind of reacting a little bit um, because it's a little bit more um, kind of muggy and you can kind of smell some of the fires. So she tends to struggle a little bit with her respiratory, um, like some breathing issues, but nothing major. So wintertime rain, she plays like a champ. Summertimes, it's pretty difficult because of how hot it is. So Aubrey's treatment plan has been slow going. Like, they didn't know how they wanted to start. Um, I think Aubrey was the first one that kind of indicated to them how their treatment should start. Aubrey said, I don't, I'm not going to stop playing sports. Um, they're like, well, it's dangerous for you to play sports if you're not sweating. And they talked to her about like, heat stroke, heat exhaustion, what that was. And Aubrey said, I, don't, I, I wanna play sports. And they're like, what sport are you playing? She said, soccer. And I'm like, that's the worst sport that we could think of to have you play. And she's like, I, I like soccer. And so we talked to Aubrey and the doctors, we made some compromises. Instead of her being a forward or midfielder for soccer, goalie would be a good position for her, less running. And she could kind of have breaks where she's standing in place. Um, so the first step of her treatment was putting on our medication to help her sweat so that we didn't have to worry about heat stroke. Um, and then it went from there. We started talking about the other symptoms that were starting to cause problems for Aubrey on a daily basis, like stomach, GI upset. So we started seeing other specialists. And so 
it took about a year for her to be on the routine and regimen of meds that she's on now. We're gonna do what we always do to start, and that is uh, line up on the corner there. And lace chop dribble. One thing we're gonna do a little differently, when we make our turn to go the short way down the goal line, I want speed dribble, okay? Knee up, toe down, wait till she gets to the yellow cone. The wall, it, it's a nickname that her coach gave her, um, and it, it really does fit. She kind of likes to shut things down on defensive end. Um, you know, she plays great all over the field, but it's, it's goalie that it's, it's her true calling. You know, she really loves diving and making stops, and, uh, you know, she always talks about her goal is to stop other people's goals. Uh, so it, it's fun to watch, to see that, like I said, that fire in the belly. She's a brick wall at the goal and a force to be reckoned with on the field when she gets in there. Uh, she, I mean, five minutes in the game, she'll score a goal. <laughs> they're doing uh, volleys uh, with the inside of their foot. And then once they're done with that, they do 10 with each foot, each partner. And after that, they do volleys with the laces of their foot. And it's just to help them get control of the ball, have a good touch on the ball when it's not on the ground, when it's in the air. Just meet your foot to the ball. We're not trying to kick through the ball. Get it back to him in the air. Don't lift your feet too high and don't be all goofy footed. Come on, focus, 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 focus. Before Aubrey was diagnosed with this autonoma, she was actually a really healthy child. Up until around three and a half, she was always getting into things, moving around, we were chasing her a lot, just always smiling. She's never one to shy away from anything. I mean, anything she does, she does it with all of her heart. She's got a lot of, we always say she's got a lot of fire in her belly. You know, she's, she's got a very uh, passionate, driven kind of attitude that uh, you just don't see all the time. It's really kind of impressive. I think what's key for anyone that's going through any difficult situation is having a circle of support, a team. And so Team Aubrey um, has been an amazing support for her. And I think everyone should have a team of people cheering them on, motivating them, helping them day to day. I love that Aubrey is up for a challenge. Um, I was not like her at nine years old. <laughs> um, she's quite brave. Um, some of the things she's had to do, like some of the appointments and testing, she has to go in without parents. I can't imagine being told, hey, you can't go in this, or your mom can't go in this room. I'd be a mess crying, and I'll be like, it's okay, mom. I'll be fine. You take care of yourself. I'm like, I should be taking care of you. Um, and just to see her every day fight through her own body falling apart on her, uh, again, I would be a mess. Like, I don't know how she handles it like a champ. Um, and she'll go to school and work hard and then come home, do homework, and then go play a sport and then comes home completely sore, aching, and she's like, it's okay. You know, tomorrow's a new day. And I had fun. And I'm like, that's such a great attitude. Alright, I've been caught in time I 